So in this task six, which is about conductive coupling, uh, which is also sometimes called resistive coupling, or you could also call it impedance coupling, we have two circuits, and these two circuits share a common copper wire as a return conductor. And this wire should have a certain radius of one millimeter and a certain length of one meter. And the conductivity of copper is given and the permittivity is given. And um, yeah, this permittivity here is also the permittivity of free space or of air because copper is not a ferromagnetic material, right? If co copper is not attracted, being attracted by magnets, and that's why the permittivity is just free space permittivity. And in the first subtask A, we should calculate the DC resistance of this wire. So how would you connect, uh, how would you calculate the DC resistance? And I will call this R DC. So direct current resistance of such a wire. Ideas. And also hello to the four people on the stream. Uh, if you have some ideas, please write them into the chat. R is equal to rho n by. Yeah, so it should depend on the length of the wire. And the longer the wire, the higher the resistance. And it should depend on resistivity, specific resistivity of the material. And we need to have some other quantity there. Area. The area, and we need to divide by the area because the larger the cross section area of the wire, um, the larger will uh, the smaller will be the resistance. Okay, so lengths we have. Um, how do we get cross section area? We have radius, right? We have a radius. And um, it says that it's a, mm, yeah, if, if it's a radius given, then it, it, it's a circle, it should be a circular cross section. So how can we calculate the area? Yeah, pi multiplied with r squared. And so then the remaining thing is, how do we get this rho, this specific resistivity? Because what is given here in the task is the conductivity. So what is the relationship between conductivity and resistivity? Or what is the relationship between resistance and conductance? Yeah. Singen? Yeah, the inverse. So one, one over kappa. Exactly. And so now we can insert all the stuff, or I could also write its length divided by kappa p r squared and just insert the values. We have one meter. Um, we have this 58 times 10 to the power of six Siemens per meter. And we have p. And we have one millimeter squared. And so one millimeter is, um, yeah, how can I rewrite this into meter? Milli is 10 to the power of minus three, exactly meter. So if I have this squared, then I get 10 to the power of minus six meter squared. And so meter and meter will cancel with the meter squared. Um, one over Siemens is the same as, or um, the unit Siemens, one Siemens means How, how, how could I replace the Siemens? Well, what, what, yeah, what unit do we want to get at the end for resistance? Ohm. 
So we, we should get on. So it, it would perfectly make sense if Siemens is one over ohm. And it is. <laughs> yeah, or Siemens is the same as Ampere, Ampere, uh, Ampere divided by volt. So instead of Siemens, I could also write ohm. Uh, I don't know if, if, I've, if I've explained this before. So um, Siemens is the um, SI unit of the conductance. And our American friends, they are not really friends of the SI units. I mean, they have their imperial units. And they also have a special symbol for the Siemens. And because Siemens is 1 over ohm, they write it as an ohm upside down. And do you have any idea how they call it? Mo. <laughs> so they call it ohm reverse, they call it Mo. So if you somewhere find this uh, ohm upside down, it's called Mo and it's the same as Siemens. But it's not, this is not an SI unit. This is something that uh, people invented. <laughs> okay. And so uh, then we, the, the 10 to the power of 6 and the 10 to the power of minus 6 will cancel each other. And uh, we have 58 times P, which is 150. And we have 1 over 150, um, which is difficult to calculate in your head. But we can also just use octave in a moment. But we should get like 1 over 170 or so ohm. And so let's go into Octave and let's try to calculate this there. So the length is one meter. The radius is 10 to the power of minus three. And this kappa is 58 times 10 to the power of six. So our area is P times R squared. And so then we can calculate this DC resistance as um, length divided by kappa divided by the area. And so we get 5.48 times 10 to the power of minus 3, which is milli and then ohm. So 5. I will write just 5.5 milli ohm. That should be the DC resistance of our wire. Um, does this make sense? Does this sound reasonable? Right? If we have a copper, copper wire, one millimeter radius, length of one meter, could be the case that this has some milli ohms of resistance. Okay. So now we can have a look at task B. And in task B, we should give some simple approximation for the alternating current resistance of the wire and what happens at higher frequencies, whatever higher means, this is what we will discuss. Um, we get eddy currents in the wire and these eddy currents are opposing um, the original current flow and that's why they are pushing the current flow to the outside of the conductor, which is then called skin effect because the current is flowing on the skin of the wire. And now the assumption is that the current only flows on a circular ring under the surface of the wire and the, the thickness of this ring equals the so-called skin depth delta and a formula for this delta for the skin depth is given here. And so this depends on our angular frequency omega, kappa, and mu, so conductivity and uh, permittivity. Uh, no, permeability um, and oh, um, that, that's an interesting typo here. Um, so this should, of course, be permeability. Interestingly, I we we, we are, I think we are using this exercise task sheet since ten years. No one ever noticed that there's permittivity instead of permeability. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, 
if I if I would let's say try to draw a, a cross section of the wire. Um, so let's try to draw some schematic. This is the the circular cross section of the wire, and we have current flowing in this direction. So for for a DC current, if I try to uh, use different colors, um, or maybe maybe let's um, yeah try to write some try to draw draw a diagram like this. So this is the current density. This is let's say the radius or the yeah the. So, so we, we are looking at the current density in, in half of the wire. So for DC, as we've discussed, current density is the same each and everywhere. So um, for DC, it's just constant. And for AC, how would you say, how, would the, how, how could the current density look like if we have some fairly developed skin effect in, in our conductor in the circular wire. So what happens due to the skin effect? The current density is not constant, the current density is not constant and the current density in the, in the center of the conductor is smaller and it increases to the outside of the conductor and it increases somehow according to some exponential function. So we have something, we, we, we could have something that is very small in the center and it increases to the outside. Yeah, and so here would be the, the, the end of the conductor. And so this is what we have at AC. And now it's quite difficult to calculate because we would need to somehow integrate over this exponential function or we would say, okay, there's a small current density in the center and there's a higher current, the, uh, current density on the outside and so on. So the, the, the assumption that we do here in our task B, let me take a different color, is that we say, okay, there's really no current in the center and then we have full current density but constant current density on the outside, on the skin. And this... The, the distance, the thickness of this is our skin depth um, data. That's, that's the idea. And this is a strange data. So I should write the data like this. Okay. Um, yeah, and so we could say, okay, this is the cross-section area and we assume that there is uh, difficult to draw in this three-dimensional schematic. Uh, there's once again this, this ring that has thickness delta. And yeah, so how can I then, using this approximation and this assumption, how can we calculate, how can we approximate the AC resistance? Ideas. No idea. Um, we could just try to use the same formula as before. So length divided by kappa and divided by some cross section area. But what cross section area do I need to use? Here it was, was the full cross section of the circular wire. And here yeah, why half? It it should be so the the current flowing is the current is flowing here in this in this uh, cross section area. And this cross section area I could call a ring, the area of the ring. So how can I calculate the cross section area of this ring? 2 pi r. So 2 pi r would be the, um, the total circumference. Is it called circumference? Okay. 
So th this would be circumference. This is what I, I would call this U. And U is... Um, more, more colors. So U is like this one times around... Uh, this is U. But, but this is the length. This cannot be an area. So something is missing there. The thickness, yeah. This would this would be an idea. So to to take this circumference and multiply it with our skin depth data. And so then it would be like if we would take this ring. Um, let me draw another schematic. So it it would be like if we would take this ring. and cut the ring at one position and then ro roll out the ring um, and turn it into a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is the width times the height. And the height is delta and the width is 2 pi r for the circumference. Um, so this would totally make sense to say, okay, this approximately is the area of this ring. Um, are there any other ideas how to calculate the area of this ring? Yeah, if we know the area in second, we can... Yeah, we could, we could say the, the, the outer or the, the full circle, the, the large circle minus the small circle. And... So this area, uh, let's say this is approximately, yeah, and we could also say the area of the ring more exactly would be, not two, would be P and then the large radius squared minus the inner radius and the inner radius would be R minus delta and this squared. Okay. Um, so R minus delta squared, how can I rewrite this? So here we have R squared and, and then R minus delta squared. How, how can I rewrite this equation? So this is like a minus b squared in, in, in brackets and then squared. So what is the result? It's r squared minus 2r delta and then plus delta squared. And so this I still have with some minus here, right? Okay. And so now you could check, okay, r squared minus r squared, they would um, somehow cancel out. And then we have minus and minus is plus 2r delta. Um, and we have some delta squared. And so now if we would assume that, that delta is way, way smaller than the radius, um, what, what would happen here? We can, we can neglect the second term. We can neglect this delta square. So if, if this is the case, then this turns into zero or then we can neglect this. And so then we can see, okay, we get minus and minus is plus, And then we also get two times P times R times delta. So we get the same approximation as over there. So this uh, seems to be legit um, to use this. And uh, yeah, so I could just take this and insert this into our equation here. And so we get, um, let's use another approximate sign. So this is length divided by um, two times P times R times delta times kappa. Um, and delta now also includes 
this values here. So there's another kappa there or square root of kappa. But yeah, we, we could also insert this there. Then this equation would get longer and more complicated, but not, not easier to understand. So of course, still AC resistance gets larger if we have, if we go to higher, uh, if we have a longer wire. Yeah, it gets smaller if we have a wire with larger radius. Um, it gets smaller if we have a larger skin depth and larger skin depth means if we go to lower frequencies. And of course, it gets smaller if we have a wire with a higher conductivity, which also perfectly makes sense. Okay, so we have a solution for task B. We have some approximation formula. Of course, we cannot calculate a value now but we have some formula that would give us an uh, approximation for the, for the AC resistance of this wire. Questions so far? Okay. So then, um, let's continue with task C. Now we should calculate the AC resistance of this wire for certain frequencies, five her, uh, 50 hertz, five kilohertz, uh, 500 kilohertz, and five megahertz using our approximation and another approximation that is given by this formula here. And this formula is still not the super exact formula um, how to calculate the AC resistance of this wire, but it's of course, more exact than our approximation because this somehow includes this exponential function. Um, but yeah, this formula here, no problem. You can calculate it with a plain calculator. If you want to, if you want to calculate uh, this formula using a plain calculator, what's the difficulty here? Yeah, it's complex and we have a square root of a complex number. And most calculators, at least the, the calculator that I had at school and so on, would not, it could deal with complex numbers, but it could not calculate square root out of complex numbers. So that's certainly the difficulty here. So of course you can somehow do it, um, but with a plain calculator, it's difficult. This is fairly easy to do with a plain calculator. Um, but with MATLAB, for example, with Octave, with some numerical computer tools, no problem at all to, to calculate this. And do, do you have an idea what would be the exact formula to calculate this? Um, so the exact formula is somewhere in the lecture slides. And the exact formula includes Bessel functions. And these Bessel functions is something that you can definitely not calculate with your plain calculator. Still, it, it's, it's doable with MATLAB. Um, but the difference between the exact solution using Bessel functions and this approximation is not too large. So there's somewhere some comparison in, in our lecture material. Okay, so now the idea is to, to calculate this here. Um, and of course, we will do this in Octave. So let's switch back to Octave and maybe move this up a bit. And so at first, um, it would be a good idea to insert these frequencies. So I will use a vector and I will put these frequencies into this vector. So kilo is 10 to the power of three and then we have 500 kilo and we have five mega and mega is 10 to the power of six. So we have these four frequencies there. Um, so then in this formula, I also need the mu and mu is also given in the exercise task. It's four times P times 10 to the power of minus seven. Yeah, so we get this typical value here. Um, and we need our angular frequency omega. So how to calculate omega? 2pf, 2 times p times f. Okay, and so of course we also get four values for our omega there. And so maybe I should 
um, always need to suppress the output here. Um, so next step that I could do with this is, of course, I could calculate um, our skin death here, this delta. And delta should be the square root of 2 divided by omega divided by kappa and divided by mu. And I would expect that now this operation fails and it does and it gives us yeah, some error message that says Ooh, here the operator uh, does not work. We have non-conformant arguments and our first operator is one by one and the second operator is one by four and I cannot do this operation. So why, why, why does it fail and what I need to correct in this equation to make it work? Yeah, so I can, I, I think I, um, I could, you, you, you mean like this? Um, uh, still, I would say we get the same, the very same error message. Yeah, we, we, we should be, so this is just a number, just some scalar value and our omega here is a vector because this contains our four values. And so we don't want to divide by a vector, we want to divide element wise by each element of this vector. And so now this should work. Um, and if I go back to my original equation, uh, which was this one here. So if I say the put the dot there, then it, it also works and I get the very same result. So we can see, okay, at 50 hertz, we get nine millimeters of skin depth. Um, and then, so from 50 hertz to five kilohertz, we have an increase of the frequency by a factor of 100. And so skin depth is proportional to the square of the frequency. So skin depth gets smaller by a factor of 10. Right, frequency, if, if we would check back the frequency, so frequencies gets larger by a factor of 100, this gets smaller by a factor of 10. Another increase by a factor of 100, this gets smaller by a factor of 10. And here we have just an increase of 10. So here we have a decrease by factor square root of 10. And square root of 10, nah, three point something. Nah, three point something, but three. For engineers, square root of 10 is three. So we approximately divide by three, by a bit more of three than, uh, than three, of course. So nine divided by three is something like three. Um, so, so this makes sense. Yeah, and so we have something in the millimeter, submillimeter, micrometer range of skin depth that we get um, for these particular frequencies. Okay, so um, um, then we can yeah, um, try to use our, our ring formula uh, that is given over here. So RAC using this ring formula would be L divided by two, maybe I should now write it like this to avoid more confusion, two times P times R times delta times kappa. And as delta is once again a vector, um, I also need to have this dot there. And then we, we, we should get four values <laughs> once again. And we get something like um, 0 0.29 milliohm, then we get 2.9 milliohm, then we get uh, 29.3 milliohm, and then we get uh, some 92, 93 milliohm. Um, if you think about these values, What, what do you say? Um, this was our DC resistance. Mm. What 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 comes to your mind if you look at this uh, at the values? It's, 
it's yeah, it, yeah, it's so for higher frequency, the higher we go in frequency, the resistance increases. And so the, the value that we calculate at this frequency uh, and also at this frequency here is smaller than the DC resistance. And, and this does not make sense, right? Um, the AC resistance due to the skin effect should not be smaller than the DC resistance. Um, and yeah, so why does this ring formula, this, this ring approximation fails here in this case? Okay, uh, we th think about it. Um, let's, let's use this more exact formula here. Uh, the, the one that is also given on the exercise sheet. So I will call this Z approx. So approximate impedance. And this is L divided by kappa and P and R squared. So kappa and P and R squared is once again the, uh, the DC resistance. If I, if I shortly check this, okay, there we see we get DC resistance. But now this is multiplied with the square root of 1 plus j, I will write 1j, uh, times omega times mu times kappa times r squared, and this divided by 4. Um, and square root should close, and I can calculate this. This should work, so I get four values. I get four complex values, and um, how do I get, so this is complex impedance. How do I get the resistance from the complex impedance? So th this complex impedance, let's say, includes the resistance of the wire and the internal inductance of the wire. But here we are just interested in the resistance. So from an impedance, how do I get resistance? And yeah, and it, so hello to the seven people in, in on the stream. If you have some idea, write something in the chat. It, it, hopefully, it should work. If you also just write hello, then I know that it works on my cell phone. Um. So ideas. How do I get from and from a complex impedance the resistive part, the resistance? The real part, the real part. So if we take the, out of this complex impedance, if we take the real part, then we get resistance. And so this is what comes from our approximation formula here. Uh, once again, this was our DC resistance and this is the AC resistance that came from this ring formula. So if I Ah, okay. So there, the Galva Bart said maybe magnitude. Yeah, magnitude from an impedance. Yeah, it's the magnitude of the impedance. Uh, but this would include um, the, the 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 resistance and the inductance. Um, so if we just want to have resistance, it's really the, the real part is better. But, but th thanks for the comment, anyhow. So now we can check. Okay, this is our DC resistance. And so here with this more exact approximation formula, we really start with the DC resistance. And then it gets slightly larger, right? And then it's much larger and much larger. And so here we can see these two values nicely fit. They also somehow fit. They, they don't fit at all, and they also don't fit at all. So, um, why does our ring approximation formula work here for these two higher frequencies, and why does it fail for these two smaller frequencies? And so, if... Yeah, because data... 
Yeah, so what does inside this equation here? Okay, there's the lengths. Okay, the lengths, nothing strange with the lengths should happen. With the radius, nothing should happen. Kappa, okay, is also a fixed value, but what changes here is the delta. So the answer should somewhere be hidden in this delta. So let's check the delta once again. And I mean, here we said, okay, at 50 hertz, the delta is 9 millimeter. And here it's 0 0.9 millimeter, and here it's 0 0.09 millimeter, and here it's 0 0.03 millimeter. Um, and so here it means the, the, the thickness of the ring is much larger than the radius. So th this approximation here and our whole assumption of this ring is totally not valid at all. Um, and that's why this formula fails here. Um, because we could check, okay, is, is delta smaller, smaller than R? Yeah, and so here it would say, no, it's not smaller. Here it's barely smaller, but not really. Um, and so, yeah, here it's really smaller and here it's really smaller. And, and so that's why it works. Okay. Um, we have calculated some values. What, what, what questions do you have related to this subtask? Okay, no, no, no questions so far. Um, so then we can, and maybe I can still fit this on this page somewhere, maybe in this space here. So now we can continue with the last subtask D. And in D, we should calculate how large is the, the induced voltage in the second circuit at these particular frequencies that we just calculated if we have, if the current in the first circuit is one ampere. Um, yeah, so two electrical circuits have this copper wire from which we just calculated the resistance as a, um, joint neutral return conductor and the first circuit is operated with, with one ampere what is the induced voltage in the second circuit and it's it's a very simple formula to calculate this so we have we have some current we have some resistance how do we get voltage Yeah, so voltage is resistance multiplied with the current. And so we then just insert our AC resistance here for that we get for, for, for these different cases. Um, and so, of course, then we get four values. And if uh, the current is one ampere, then of course the voltage um, has the same. Um, the same value as the resistance. So I will maybe use this more exact formula here. So resistance multiplied with current gives us voltage. And this is now the voltage that we only have due to this real part, uh, due to the resistance. And then this would be the values that we get for the voltage. And we can see, okay, um, for low frequencies, it's just five millivolts. And then it's increasing a little bit. Then we already have um, slightly less than 30 millivolts and then at 5 megahertz we already have 90 millivolts and this would go up um, so the higher the frequency the more um, resistance due to the skin effect and the more voltage noise uh, induced voltage due to this conductive coupling resistive coupling um, galvanic coupling ohmic coupling impedance coupling how, however you would call this Okay. Further questions related to this task? Then I will try to save this. So this would be EMC task six. And I will also directly export this. And 
Uh, go back to the table. And so the other task for today that is mentioned here is task 20. And task 20 also deals with conductive coupling. And so we have partly done this. Um, I will I will also copy this in a second to a, to a second sheet. And um, yeah, so we, we have we have already defined these variables and so on. And now we should do this for more frequencies. Before we do it for more frequencies, I would like to go back to the course and um, also open up the lecture slides and try to find this formula uh, where we have the, the, the exact solution. And But I'm not sure if we have um yeah if we have okay we we also find this Bessel function in um in octave no problem so here's the galvanic coupling and here is this This exact formula for the exact impedance of a circular wire. So this is also what we can try to try to plot in a second. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, I think I don't need to write something down for this. So in this task 20, we can once again think about conductive and resistive or ohmic or impedance or galvanic coupling. Um, and here MATLAB is suggested. I uh, uh, will use octave now. Uh, that is also mentioned here, uh, which has the very same syntax. You could also do it in Python or other numerical tools. And um, while solving the exercise task six, that is also mentioned here, um, we, we, we thought about some formulas and we already did part of the calculation because we defined all these variables and we already did some calculations, but just for four frequencies, namely 50 hertz, 500 kilohertz, um, no, um, 5 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz, and 5 megahertz. And now the idea of this task is, okay, so this is what we have done. Uh, here it should be calculated for a single frequency just to check if it works. And so now the idea here is to repeat this, uh, th these calculations for, for more frequencies. For example, 500 logarith logarithmically spaced frequencies between... Five, uh, 50 hertz and 5 megahertz. So this, the same range that we looked at now, but not just four frequencies, 500 of them. And then plot the AC resistance as a function of frequency in a double logarithmic diagram. That's the idea. Okay, so let's go back to Octave and uh, let's scroll down. So what we used before for the frequency was like this, four values. So how do I get a logarithmically spaced vector um, that starts with, with this frequency here, that ends with this frequency, and where I have 500 points in between that are logarithmically spaced? Who's, who's a MATLAB expert uh, or Octave? Or there, exactly, there is a command that is called log space. So if I will say help log space, then it will tell us um, this log space returns a row vector with n elements that are logarithmically spaced from 10 to the power of a to 10 to the power of b and with n points. So um, yeah, the, the, the problem is you don't really give the starting value and the end value, you give the, the, the power of this or um, 
10 to the power of this is used as the starting value. Um, yeah, so question is, so once again, this is our frequency. Yeah, so we now want to have something, a log space that would start with 50, that would end with 5 mega with 500 points. But we have read before, it's not really using this as a starting value. Now it would use 10 to the power of 50 and 10 to the power of, so um, what would I need to do with them so that our log space is really starting with 50? I, I, I need to use, I need to have the inverse of this operation here. What is the inverse of this operation? Um, if I, if I would know the result of this and I would like to have B log yeah, and, and log to this base here. So log 10. So if we say log space of log 10 of 50 and log 10 of 5 megahertz with 500 points, I will escape the output because otherwise I would have 500 values on this. So if I check, let's say the first three values, okay, it's starting with 50 and it's going up. And if I would check the end minus three until end, the last three values or the last four values, um, then we see, okay, it's still going up and the last value is 50, no, five, five megahertz. Yeah, so perfectly makes sense. Okay, so um, yeah, that, we just need to repeat these calculations now. So we need to have a new omega. And maybe I can make my octave a little larger now um, so that we can also see that omega now has also 500 points, as you can see here. Um, so if I have a new omega, I can, of course, also calculate a new delta. And I will also escape the output here. So now we also get 500 values for delta, which nicely makes sense. Um, <laughs> So next step that I could probably do is I could calculate this, this approximation or use this approximation formula that we had before. And I will also escape the output here. So now this is also 500 values. And I could use our AC ring formula uh, that includes skin death data and recalculate it. So then for this R ring, which should be somewhere here on top, now we are also 500 values. And so now I could try to plot them as suggested here. Plot the resulting AC resistances as a function of the frequency into a double logarithmic diagram. Okay, so um, how do I get a double logarithmic diagram? Which, which command um, should I use? How, how would you create a usual diagram? Yeah. With plot. So if we, if we maybe check um, help plot, so then it would tell us, okay, plot is doing, oh, there's a long help, uh, ooh, very long help, very long help. Uh, so plot says, um, yeah, it says it's plotting something, but, um, and there are all the parameters that we can use. And so also see also semi-log X, semi-log Y, log log. So log log, help log log, log log is doing logarithmic scales for both X's. So this should be a double logarithmic diagram. So if we say log log of the frequency and um, at first maybe plot this more exact approximation formula that, he had, that we had there. So as a function of frequency, we are plotting the resistance. And let's check what happens. So it looks like this. Um, I know these numbers are super small. I don't know why still, uh, but okay, this is the diagram that we have, that we get. And as we are 
good engineers, we should also label our axis and say on the y-axis, this is the frequency in Hertz. And on the, uh, on the x-axis and on the y-axis, this is the resistance in Ohm. And we might also want to have a grid. And so then our diagram looks like this. And we can see, so this is the frequency where we are starting, 50 hertz. Um, resistance stays pretty constant. So here we have 100 hertz, here we have 1 kilohertz, here we have 10 kilohertz, and at 10 kilohertz somehow our skin effect is developing. And then now we have this um, corner frequency or this intermediate region. And then really the resistance increases proportional to the square root of the frequency. So if we increase, let's say from here uh, to approximately here, we increase the frequency by a factor of 10 and resist uh, we increase the frequency by a factor of 100 and the, the resistance increases by a factor of 10. Right? Okay. So now if I take the same plot and in this log log plot, uh, or maybe I should, I should try to do it with hold on. So if I into the same plot, plot the, our ring approximation, AC ring, why, why is it? Why is my the tab not working? Okay, okay, yeah. So now we can see. Okay, this is the this ring formula, and this of course works for higher frequencies as we discussed, and for smaller frequencies where the skin depth is larger than the the radius of the wire does not work. We get strong differences, but here it works pretty nice. And so for for low frequencies. I could also say, okay, lock, lock. Um, let's try to plot our DC resistance in there. Hold on. Um, say again? Hold on. Uh, yeah, we still have hold on. So it, it should plot another curve, no problem. But the, the DC resistance is just one value. And I want to have now a curve of 500 points, 500 times the very same value. Um, so how do I get this? So I think if I if I plot it like this, I'm not sure what will happen. Um, it's it's somehow not plotting. Uh, it's do doing nothing, but hopefully I can stop it. Uh, so ah okay, there, there did something. It tried to plot the very same value 500 times in there. Ha ah, does not look too nice. So uh, let's say hold off. Um, and just plot it once again here. So um, maybe change our plotting command so that we get the, the real part. Okay, and so directly plot this into one diagram. Yeah, and so how can I turn my RDC, which is just one value, how can I turn it into 500 times the very same value? You can just multiply. We, 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 could, we can multiply it and we can multiply it, if we multiply it with a vector that contains 500 ones, then we have... 500 times the very same value. So how can I generate a vector that just contains ones with a command that is called ones. <laughs> and I, I want to have one row and 500 columns because this is the same dimension that we use here, one row and 500 columns. So if I use it like this and now it's longer than one line, um, and enter and now yeah this is the reason why sometimes MATLAB is still better okay so then then we see okay now we have three curves in there um, 
This is our DC resistance. This is a good approximation for low frequencies. This is our ring formula. This is a pretty nice approximation for high frequencies. And in this intermediate region where the skin effect develops, but it's not really important there, we have some, we do some mistake with, with both of these very simple approximations. Um, and yeah, this, the, the formula that we used before, this one here with the um, square root of this complex function there, this is better because also it takes into account this intermediate region. Okay, so before we continue, just let me label the axis once again and add a grid. And what we should maybe also do, because we have three curves now, is we should add the legend and say, okay, the first curve is, yeah, this Z approx. And then the real part of this, but okay, we know what we mean. Uh, the second thing is the, the ring formula. And the last curve is just DC resistance. Okay. And so then we have a legend. The legend is not placed at a nice position and still the font is super, super small, but okay. That's still somehow working. Do you have questions so far? Somehow making sense? Okay, so then uh, let's add more confusion. No, let's um, add some difficulty to the task. Let's try to use this exact formula to see how this behaves. So I will move it down a bit and try to put my octave window here on top. Uh, we don't need this. We can maybe try to make this a little smaller. Okay, so our exact impedance, um, as we can see, it includes something that looks like our, our ring resistance formula here because it's 2PR and kappa, but it, it does not include delta, but it's, yeah, still something. And uh, okay, we have omega and mu, no problem. And these J functions here, as it's mentioned here, are Bessel functions of the first kind with zeros and first order. And you can find these Bessel functions in MATLAB and in Octave, they are called Bessel J. And so if we check, it says this is the Bessel function of the first kind. And we give the argument, which is called alpha. Uh, no, we give, and we need to check. Maybe alpha is the order. Uh, I think alpha is the order, yeah? Okay, yeah. The, the order of the Bessel function alpha must be real. So alpha is the order, and x is the argument. So, mm, there's the command prompt. So, Our exact impedance can be calculated by L divided by 2 times P times R times kappa and is multiplied with the square root of minus J multiplied with omega and mu and kappa. And so this uh, square root we need to have once again inside the argument of this Bessel function. So I will try to somehow copy this so I can paste it once again. And uh, oh, and there's a long question in the chat. I will come to this long question in the chat in a second. So um, instead of J0, I need to write Bessel J0. And now our argument and the argument is radius multiplied with the square root. And now this divided by. The, sec the, the, the other Bessel function there, which is of first order with the very same argument. Okay, and so now we need to check. Um, this is just a number, this is just a number, just a number, just a number. So this should be no problem. This includes omega. Omega is a vector. Uh, this also includes omega. This also includes omega. So these are all vectors. So. The multiplication here at this position 
where my cursor now is, this should be a dot. And this should also be a dot here. And then I will escape the output so we don't see 500 values and it worked, which is nice. Okay, so now I will do hold on and just add this curve to our log log plot. So once again, the real part of this exact impedance, yeah, because as you said, a real part of impedance is resistance. And add this. And so now we should have a fourth curve into our diagram. And now we see, okay, that the fourth curve, uh, which is now called data one here, yeah, that the difference between the real exact formula, including the special functions and this much more simple approximation that we used before here, just with the square root, that this is really negligible from my point of view. Um, so it, yeah, it, in this case, it does not really make sense to really uh, um, calculate this, this exact formula with the Bessel functions. But at the end, in Octave, in MATLAB, um, the, the computational effort, the burden is not much stronger in using this than in this formula, in this approximation formula that we used before. Do you have questions? I can I can zoom in on the plot for sure. At the lower frequencies here, if there's a difference there, um, I think there should be no difference. And there is yeah, there is a very small difference. Um, but now we have no access here anymore, so we don't know how large this difference is. Um, we can, I mean, what what we can do is we can, and then I will come to the question in the chat. So. Hmm. If I, uh, you always need to delete this if you just press something. Okay, so if we, if we look at our RDC value, okay, this is this. If we take a look at the real part of this approximation formula and this of the first value, so we see, okay, we get, at least in this precision, we get exactly the same value. And if we do it for the exact formula, uh, we also get the very same value. Now, how can I get Octave to display more digits of the number? We, 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 we would need to change the number format and make it longer. So we say format long. <laughs> and if we say format long, and uh, once again, take a look at R DC. Yeah, so now we get all the digits, all the digits, all the digits. And now we see, okay, yeah, there is some difference between them. And th this is now a really good question where this difference comes from. Because if you check um, yeah, if you check our, our approximative formula this year, this at the beginning, this is the same as RDC. And so if you insert some small frequency, then of course the frequency, the frequency term here should be, if the frequency is small, um, this should get smaller than the one and the square root out of one is one. But yeah, it's not it's not super small, there is some frequency. And that's why there is some term and the square root is, the, the, the argument of the square root is not exactly one. And that's why we get, we get this difference. And yeah, that's why we also have a difference there. Um, because there is some, yeah, some, some very, 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 still very, very, very small skin effect even already at 50 Hertz. Okay, more questions? Okay, then I, then there's a very long question um, in the chat from a person called EJUK1. And he says, good evening. Yeah, So in Germany, we would say, good morning still, maybe. 
uh, for, for us it's about lunchtime. So could you help me if I know about programming frequency bands in shortwave radios? Um, so I'm English. I would able to give some advice and write me something in chat there. And okay, and he's also approaching the other person in chat. So to be honest, um, I don't have so much clue about shortwave radios. I don't know if someone in the room has. <laughs> uh, probably not. I would I would suggest to find some um, amateur radio cl club in in your in your region. Uh, and these people for sure know lots of shortwave radio because they build devices to communicate with shortwave and also longwave uh, radio. And uh, these people are usually also very friendly and um, very welcome to answer questions related to radio communication. Um, but not me, <laughs> really. But it's a good question. Okay. Any, any other ideas? Any other questions? So um, then maybe what we can do and what I would, what, what, what I usually, you know, what I like to do is we go back to this task and I need my other tool here, text auswahl Werkzeug. Um, and I will copy this already. And open up ChatGPT. So let, let's test once again how ChatGPT would solve this task that we already checked before. So the DC resistance that we should get is 5.5 milliohm. This is what we calculated. So I will copy this. Uh, we I think we don't know the, the, the title of this task. Just the task there. And the wire has a radius. We have this and this. And we, we of course, we need to check your units might be somehow corrupted. The conductivity is five times 10 to the power of six. Siemens per meter and the permittivity is here also the power is missing or maybe like this and then it's volt seconds volt seconds divided by ampere and meter and uh, we should not confuse ChatGPT and also correct this typo here and say the permeability of copper is this okay Calculate the DC resistance. So let's check what it does. And it says, okay, we can use this formula with length and conductivity and area. And it inserts, inserts these values. By the way, we are using ChatGPT 4.0. And cross-section area is this and this. And then it also gives us the 10 to the power of minus 6 um, meters squared. This is also what we had um, yeah, written here where we said, okay, one millimeter is 10 to the power of minus three meter. And so we get this value and we can ask, okay, can you convert this into milliohm? And then it does the conversion and says, okay, 5.5 .5 milliohm, not, not too bad. Um, and if we check, yeah, it's it's also including units each and everywhere. So it's, um, I would say it's a useful solution. Okay, so now this is, I would say this, this can be a pretty hard task. So give a simple um, approximation for this alternating current thing. And so here we have the square root. Maybe I should write this as square root of 2 divided by this and so on and so on. Um, okay. Now, I'm curious what will happen. So it repeats this formula for the skin death and explains us what are the values that we use there. And so now it says, okay, we can still use the same formula as before, but we need to use some effective area. And the effective area that 
and ChatGPT comes up with is also the area of this ring, the approximation that we developed, circumference multiplied with delta. And if we substitute this into this formula, then we get something. And it's also trying to substitute the skin death formula. This is not what we have done. Um, yeah, so it's it's probably correct. Um, we, we have not checked. And so now it's trying to insert values that we know there and trying to substitute something. Okay, and then, <laughs> and then it somehow crashes uh, by simplifying this. Okay, so I can, I don't know if I can continue. I, I think I, let's, I, I need to regenerate. Okay. Okay, so let it regenerate in the background, but it was not too bad. Um, so we could also try to ask it this one, but I'm, I'm not sure if, if we can explain the formula in this way. To try to add the screen. Yeah. Or we can, yeah. So of course, this is, this is a very good idea. That's why I have you on my side. Uh, we can, of course, we can just make a screenshot of this. Um, yeah, so let's check again what it did here. Uh, so it repeated the skin death formula. Now, interestingly, it, yeah, before it said A effective, now it says AAC. Um, yeah, but it does the same thing. Okay. And, and it's trying to insert these values, but I think it's not too bad. It's, um, it, it's something that we also came up with, right? L divided by kappa. 2PR and delta. Um, so look looks familiar. Okay, so then last thing. Um, can you also solve this task? Yeah, but still I would say it's <laughs> for sure not everything that comes out here is useful. Or is, is meaningful. Um, so, some is not helpful at all. Okay, it seems there was an issue with handling complex numbers in the formula of this approximative impedance. And I will correct this by using an appropriate handling for complex square roots and absolute values. Let me fix these calculations. Okay, so yeah, it, it tries to do some to write some Python stuff here. I don't know why it uses, why it needs pandas for this. Um, I would just say we probably just need NumPy or SciPy. In NumPy. Okay, and it, it comes up with a table. And I think it comes up with the same values that no, it comes up with different values, right? So here we have approximately our DC resistance a little more, but this is wrong and this is also wrong. And this is these are the same values that we got before. Yeah, so so this works, but this is not correct. Um yeah, and the the, the problem is we now know that this is correct and this is not correct because we have calculated before and we have checked before. And if you have not then the answer here won't be super helpful, I would say. Um, yeah, and so it has corrected something in these formulas, but I think the correction, whatever correction ChatGPT here came up with, was wrong. So the final result here does not fit and is not is unfortunately not meaningful at all. So yeah, for for the simple task A and B, it's really strong. For this more complicated task, it's not so helpful and even for the task b there's right. lots of stuff that b was not easy yeah and b, b b was also not easy for so for b being not super easy um the solution is helpful uh, but it's it's maybe too long there there's too much stuff in there that is at the end not not really helpful in comparison with the simple solution that we did here